Good morning. So today I finally have someone who we have been rescheduling for for quite a while and we finally managed to make it work after two to three months. He is a startup CEO with experience on both sides of the venture world. He started his career in venture as part of a team player at Light Bank and then he started his own company. So he has had a long journey since then. So let's welcome David on 10 Minutes of Hiding Wisdom where he will tell us about his experience, what it takes to be successful and what we can learn from his journey. Hi, David. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm glad we finally got to get on this. Finally, I think it finally. was definitely took quite a while, but I mean, all is well that ends well. So I'm glad we managed to make it work. So David, can you tell us about where you work, what your role is within the company? Yep, absolutely. So um, I'm one of the founders and the CEO of Acclaimant.com. Um, we are a web-based SaaS platform that really focuses on helping all companies become better at what we call active risk management. Uh, but the basic premise of the business is that we use technologies to help companies be safer, deal with workplace injuries, accidents, and illnesses more effectively, and ultimately turn their risk management division from a cost center and a compliance effort to a profitable part of the company growth story and enabling it with technology. So it's been it's been a lot of fun. I've been doing this for almost going up on 10 years now. Um, and it's amazing to kind of still still be privileged enough to kind of be here and have a great team behind us. Of course, that sounds amazing. I think my next question for you would be, risk is something that is unseen. It's unforeseen, like you can't predict it. So how do you mitigate those occurrences? How do you mitigate the costs associated with those risks in order to come up with something like that? Yeah, great question. Um, so a lot of what we help people do is focus on things step by step and piece by piece. So a lot of our focus is with heavy industry, staffing, construction, manufacturing, logistics, and they're dealing with a large amount of workplace injuries, auto accidents and damage, property damage, third party issues. And so in order to kind of help people work through all of these things, they have a number of both checks and prevention they go through. And then they develop playbooks that just like if you're going to the doctor, right, if you do things like eat right, work out seven days a week, get eight hours of sleep, you know, limit drugs and alcohol, like you'll generally be healthier, like the same principles apply to business, right? Those who are more prepared, those who are more active, kind of follow consistent protocols and procedures. All those things really help people to unlock all of this wasted value. The simpler way to think about it is if someone was to get hurt at your workplace and you didn't talk to them for two months, they would be upset. <laughs> they would probably be more <laughs> injured, right? Others will hear about it. You may hear from a lawyer. If you're active in how you deal with these things, like talking to the employees, making sure they're re-engaged, finding alternate assignments for them, making sure that the claims are processed the right way, it's amazing both how much more opportunity you can create for people who are involved in those issues, but also how much value you can unlock for both the corporate and for the employees that are all part of that problem and solution. Okay, thank you. As like, I'm glad that people like you still exist who are in there <laughs> to make sure that employees are taken care of. But my, I, my next question, it is very important because at the end of the day, employees run the business. And if they're happy at the end of the day, they're more likely to stick with your companies during the hard and bad times, which is something that the pandemic taught us because so many people left their jobs because they just weren't happy with their positions. So yep. it seems like you're doing something so right. true. <laughs> seems like you're doing something right david where did the idea come from uh come from for this company like wh where why did you think of this and that, like you mentioned that you're one of the co-founders so how did the idea come into origination yep so there, there was actually three founders of the business um one of them is actually now my father-in-law at the time we started he was not he was just uh you know my my, my girlfriend's dad <laughs> um and so if you can imagine uh my now wife and i had been dating for you know uh probably about a year or two and okay. her dad is, is a 35-year insurance guy. Um, he was running a small insurance company and came to me and said, hey, you're a technology guy, right? And I was like, oh, God, here we go. Um, <laughs> he's like, you should build me an app. Um, and as we started to go ahead and dig in, um, there's a much more amusing version of the story. But, but the short version is he was seeing all these problems with all these companies he was working with. Nobody knew what to do when someone got hurt. Nobody knew how to follow up. Nobody was excited about the experience. No one was satisfied with the result. And every time he asked, why isn't there a simpler way to do this? Why doesn't someone just make this process easier? Everyone was like, oh, just the way it is. And so he kind of had the nugget of the idea. Uh, I kind of joined in early and then brought in one other co-founder, um, our, our CTO, Joel Friedman. Um, and then the rest was history. So I kind of fell into it. That's probably the best way to put it. 
at least you don't have a bad encounter with your girlfriend's father. Usually <laughs> some of the experiences can be really bad and nerve wracking. So at least yeah. you gain something out of it. I mean, you gained a wonderful girlfriend, you gained a wonderful father-in-law, but you also gained and learned something from this experience, which is something itself. It's very amazing. So hats yes. off to you, David. You handled the situation really well, like a pro. Thank so you very much. I, <laughs> it worked out for the best. <laughs> it worked out for the best, exactly. So David, my next question for you would be, is your company hiring? What kind of positions are open? So if people are reach, looking out for positions, what, they know what to look for. Yes. So we, we are in that phase of growth where we are always hiring and always looking for a good talent um, across the board. Um, I think we have a little extra emphasis right now in go-to-market. So for us, sales, account management, account executives, SDRs, um, and then uh, a little bit on the development side as well. So um, upcoming will be product managers, um, I think we're looking at a front end developer position and a few others, I think are kind of the big things, but you know, we're always at this point in time where we're in constant growth mode. Um, I think the company doubled in size last year, give or take. Um, so we know that as you kind of go on that pace, like there's never enough good talent. There's never enough people who are exciting to work with. So if you're looking for a job, reach out. And if we don't have availability right now, we definitely will have one here shortly. Okay. And what does your interview process look like? Because some companies have such long processes by the time their interviews end, the candidate doesn't seem interested. So is your process simple, straightforward? Is your process long? How do you make sure that the interview process caters to the needs of the candidate to ensure that they find the best talent at the end of the day? Yeah, well, especially in the past year and a half, but to totally retool how we do hiring because the way in which the world moves has completely changed. I mean, we've had mm-hmm. candidates who have started interviewing with us on Monday and call us on Tuesday and said, hey, I have two offers coming on Wednesday. <laughs> um, are you as interested? And, and so we, we had to kind of fundamentally step back and figure out what was important and what wasn't. Um, the second thing that we kind of ran into um, was that, you know, we, we as a company, we're, we're growing up quickly. We were, you know, probably about 25 people, n- not too much more than a year ago, and now we're 50. Um, you know, we're hiring multiple people a month. And, and so in order to scale that when you're small, everybody can touch every person coming in because it's like it's a family, right? It's small. Everyone knows everyone. As you get bigger, we have to find the right people to be involved and make sure those people are kind of where representing everything else going on. So we've tried to narrow it down to kind of a fit interview, a screen, and then kind of a skills test in most cases with a little bit more for kind of senior positions, but really trying to make sure that people who are coming in both know what they're getting into like have the skills to be successful and then want to be here. And if we can check those three boxes for us, um, normally we'll have a pretty good assessment for, for kind of how someone's going to get in. Um, and then hopefully they also can have a good enough feel for us to be able to make a smart decision because the flip side of it is it's great when candidates getting multiple offers, but the problem also is they then have to make a pretty impactful decision. Like picking a job <laughs> is no small task. So I just think it's hard to hard for us to scream. They have to go ahead and figure out which of these three offers do I want to see? The numbers look all the same-ish. So how do you help someone get up to speed when that, that, that type of a time frame is also one of the things we've been working very hard to try to kind of figure out as well. No, no, that definitely makes sense. I think uh, one thing that's changed, especially during the pandemic, is usually it used to be a one-way street where the hiring managers, where the companies had all the power. But these yep. days, it's the candidates that have everything in their hands where they're like, oh, I have this offer, I have this offer, so why should I choose you? So I think it's companies that need to present themselves in a way which would excite the candidates to make sure that they would choose them at the end of the day. So thank you for sharing that and for working on that process, especially because a lot of companies these days are still struggling. So it's definitely impressive to see that your company has caught up to speed and is doing something that's different. Last question, David, which is, what is something that you've learned along the way which would be useful for job seekers out there these days to help them find a job? Yeah. Um, so this is going to sound really easy to say um, coming from the company side, but um especially these days, I I think the most important thing that people forget is that it's not all about the money, um, especially today. Like there's, and anybody who's in this job market right now, especially in tech, is going to get money chucked at them. And at a certain (laughs) point in time, like, by the way, it's great. You got to pay your bills. You got to feed your family. You got to put away savings. Those things are good. But I can't tell you how many people I've seen who have taken jobs for the wrong reason, which is just thinking about my comp as as the big and only driver, not recognizing that like the hours may be different, the support you're gonna get may be different, the career path may be different. And I think especially in the past year, like like the dynamics in the market have shifted incredibly into the favor of the actual people who are kind of like out there, the candidates. Um, but I think it's it's almost gotten to the point where like it's now so easy to go out and double your pay um, or 50% increase your pay 
But what people don't realize and what they don't hear about is everyone hears that first part of the story. I can't tell you how many people I know, both personally, I've seen a network that have taken these huge jumps in pay to go somewhere else and in three months have quit. Um, because they got there and they realized that like, listen, you don't get that just because somebody likes you. Like you get that if there's a reason, like they're scaling fast, there's not enough talent. They need to fill a huge problem in a huge hole. Um, and eventually like these things all balance out. So it's important to make sure everybody gets exactly what they're worth. They're paid fairly. And I think it, no one should ever kind of take less than they feel like they're worth. But I think it's really important for people to kind of look at everything else because ideally, like if you do this right, and I, maybe I'm a little old school, like I'm all for finding a company and growing with them and learning and like taking the things that you're kind of building up as your skills and compounding and tripling those down. And I think that's easiest if you can find a company that wants to grow along with you. So the way I would kind of phrase the people is, listen, find a, find the job you want to do, find the pay that you think is right. And then beyond that, like, don't, don't get sucked in by the money. Like find the place where you can go, maybe not 30% more today, but where you can double your salary in two or three years and become the manager or the director or the VP or the SVP that you have people that you want to work with every day. Because at the end of the day, like money's only half the equation. Um, and I think to kind of think about it more holistically, I think will make a lot more people a lot happier these days. Okay, beautifully said. I think you touched upon the fact that money can't really buy happiness at the end of the day. And I think scientifically, it has been proven that you reach a point where no matter how much money you earn after a certain point doesn't really matter. So I think it's the people, it's the culture, it's the values and the people that you work with that really does make the learning experience and the work experience so important. So thank you so much for sharing that, David. But other Absolutely. than that, David, our time is up. It was an absolute pleasure learning about you, how you came across your father-in-law and how you started this own company it was an absolutely amazing story and i'm so grateful that people like you still exist who are looking after their employees thank you so much for coming on the show of course thanks for having me appreciate it okay.